The Byzantine Empire, also referred to as the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantium, was the continuation of the Roman Empire in its eastern provinces during late antiquity and the Middle Ages, when its capital city was Constantinople. It survived the fragmentation and fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century AD and continued to exist for an additional thousand years until the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Empire in 1453. During most of its existence, the empire remained the most powerful economic, cultural, and military force in Europe. The terms, Byzantine Empire, and Eastern Roman Empire, were coined after the end of the realm, its citizens continued to refer to their empire as the Roman Empire, and to themselves as Romans. Although the Roman state continued and its traditions were maintained, modern historians distinguished Byzantium from its earlier incarnation because it was centered on Constantinople and not Rome, oriented towards Greek rather than Latin culture, and characterized by Eastern Orthodox Christianity, instead of Roman Catholicism or Paganism. Our subject on this video is not the history of Byzantine or Eastern Roman Empire but just a tradition during those times. During the Eastern Roman Empire, the idiomatic clause, to be born with a silver spoon in the mouth, in English was somehow equal with the clause used by Byzantium people, to be born in purple, while the first one describes the situation of being born in a rich or aristocratic family, the second one defines being a member of the royalty by birth rights. Traditionally, in Byzantine Empire, to be born in purple was defining a category of members of royal families born during the reign of their parent. This notion was later loosely expanded to include all children born of prominent or high-ranking parents. Later on, the rank hierarchy changed from nobility to richness. The parents must be prominent at the time of the child's birth so that the child is always in the spotlight and destined for a prominent role in life. A child born before the parents become prominent would not be born in the purple. This color purple came to refer to Tyrian purple, restricted by law, custom, and the expense of creating it to royalty. The reason for purple color's regal reputation comes down to a simple case of supply and demand. For centuries, the purple dye trade was centered in the ancient Phoenician city of Tyre in modern-day Lebanon. The Phoenicians, Tyrian purple, came from a species of sea snail now known as Bolanus brandarus, and it was so exceedingly rare that it became worth its weight in gold. To harvest it, dye makers had to crack open the snail's shell, extract a purple-producing mucus and expose it to sunlight for a precise amount of time. It took as many as 250,000 mollusks to yield just one ounce of usable dye, but the result was a vibrant and long-lasting shade of purple. Clothes made from the dye were exorbitantly expensive. A pound of purple wool cost more than most people earned in a year, so they naturally became the calling card of the rich and powerful. It also didn't hurt that Tyrian purple was said to resemble the color of clotted blood, a shade that supposedly carried divine connotations. Its production was extremely expensive, so the dye was used as a status symbol by the ancient Romans, e.g. a purple stripe on the togas of Roman magistrates. By the Byzantine period the color had become associated with the emperors, and sumptuary laws restricted its use by anyone except the imperial household.
purple was thus seen as an imperial color. The Byzantines themselves ascribed this situation either to the fact that the child was born to parents bearing the imperial purple, or because the child was born in a special porphyry chamber in the Great Palace of Constantinople. As the Porphyrogenete 12th century princess Anna Comnena described it, the room, set apart long ago for an empress's confinement, was located, where the stone oxen and the lions stand, i.e. the Bucoleon Palace, and was in the form of a perfect square from floor to ceiling, with the latter ending in a pyramid. Its walls, floor and ceiling were completely veneered with imperial porphyry, which was, generally of a purple color throughout, but with white spots like sand sprinkled over it. The royal class purple monopoly finally waned after the fall of the Byzantine Empire in the 15th century, but the color didn't become more widely available until the 1850s, when the first synthetic dyes hit the market. The concept of porphyrogenitos, literally meaning, born in the purple, was known from the 6th century in connection with growing ideas of hereditary legitimacy. Last Emperor Constantine died the day Constantinople fell to Ottomans. There were no known surviving eyewitnesses to the death of the emperor and none of his entourage survived to offer any credible account of his death. The Greek historian Michael Critobulus, who later worked in the service of Mehmed, wrote that Constantine died fighting the Ottomans. It is also said that the corpse of the emperor who were fighting like a simple gradeless soldier were identified by noticing the royal, Tyrian purple, shoes on his feet. <laughs>